So now there's a clean slate. Now, now there it's is a new day. Yeah. Now, now there's a quarterback there. I'm going somewhere with this though, <laughs> because the front office has already commenced the process of pissing off the next quarterback as evidenced by the comments publicly <laughs> from Packers GM, Brian Gutekunst about something that we just assumed they would do pick up the fifth year option on Jordan love. He hasn't had a chance to play for you to say, we don't want him. You've cleared out Aaron Rodgers so you can hand him the ball and say, go do it. He's got one year left on his rookie contract. Surely you're picking up the fifth year option. Please don't call me Shirley. Here's Brian Gutekunst explaining that maybe they won't pick up the option. Have a listen. Yeah, I got to figure that out by Tuesday, I guess. Yeah, but uh, we're kind of still working through that. We've been so focused on the draft. We've had some preliminary conversations, but we'll get to that before Tuesday. What would be the reason not to? Uh, again, I got to get through that. Um, there's, you know, it's a lot of money for a guy who hasn't, you know, played. But um, at the same time, obviously, we're we're moving forward with him, so we'll we'll figure that out by Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, certain things I don't think you say out loud, especially when you've got a recent history of a bad relationship with your starting quarterback. It's a lot of money for a guy who hasn't played. The reason he hasn't played is because you drafted him into a situation where you had a guy who became a two-time MVP, then played for another year. And what's he going to do? What's he going to do? Win the job? What's he going to do? Beat out Aaron Rodgers? He hasn't played because you drafted him into a situation where he wasn't going to play. And this idea, and I, I'm sorry, Brian, I'm you know, doing, a, doing a, a post-draft GM interview series, and I made a request for good because probably not going to get a yes after I say this. What are you doing waiting until the last freaking day to decide what you're going to do with this fifth-year option? You mean to tell me you got no inkling? You got no idea? Uh, yeah. You've done no research? You've given no that. thought whatsoever right. to whether right. or not you're going to pick it up? So why? I mean, but what's the point? I understand strategic lying. I don't understand just this casual, oh, I've been so busy with everything else, I haven't even thought about it. What do you mean you haven't thought about it? I mean, that tells me the answer is no, they're not going to pick it up. Yes. They're leaning that way. Right, right. That's what it tells me. I would agree with that. Uh, I, I, would, I would definitely agree with that. I think that they thought this, you know, this has been thought out. He knew the answer there. For whatever reason, they didn't want to say it yesterday or they want to bring it down to the deadline to make it look like they're – hemming and hawing over. Hmm, I don't know. Should we haw? I don't know. Maybe we should. All right. So uh, that's what I, but, but no way are they doing it. And honestly, you, you're right. I mean, they put him in this situation, but I wouldn't give him the fifth year option either. Hey, Daniel Jones, like we saw last year, we don't know what he is yet. I'm not committing 20 plus million dollars, two years down the road to this guy. Now, you're going to have to play the angle a little bit of like what the Giants did with Daniel Jones. Hey, we drafted you. Hey, we like you. Hey, we know what you are. You really want to go somewhere else and, you know, just start at the bottom again and try to work your way there? We believe in you here. We've made you the starter. We pushed Aaron Rodgers out the door. So they have that in their, you know, bag of trips, tricks in their corner, whatever you want to say there to, you know, placate Jordan Love when it's all said and done. He knows he's at a spot here where he can be the man, and there's no other spot in football right now that he can do that. So I don't think they exercise the fifth-year option, and uh, I could see it being, hey, he has. if he does have a good year, then they figure something out on another one- or two-year deal just to kind of buy a little more time to evaluate him or whatever else, and then they go from there. Well, probably a four or five year deal masquerading Maybe, as right. a one or a two year deal, yeah, or exactly, vice versa. Right. One or two masquerading as four or five, right, right. just like Daniel Jones. They can pull the plug on him. Seahawks can pull the plug on Geno Smith. But you know, the, the union gets criticized a lot for the quality of the CBAs that it negotiates, and people always gloss over the fact that at the end of the day, the rank and file aren't going to walk out the door. They're not going to take a lockout that goes into the regular season. They're not going to strike that goes into the regular season. That ship sailed during yeah. your dad's career. That's just not in the toolkit right. for the union. So they do the best deals they can, knowing that the nuclear option is never going to happen. Actually, the full-blown nuclear option is go out and set up your own games, which will never happen either. But that's the ultimate, that's the ultimate counter to replacement players, is we're going to replace the league. My point is this. Against that backdrop, it's hard to get great terms if you're the union. One of the great terms they got in 2020 was that the fifth-year option is now fully guaranteed upon exercise. It used to be guaranteed for injury upon exercise 
fully guaranteed first day of the league year when it's due to be earned. That's why once upon a time, the Jaguars worked out a deal with Blake Bortles on a short-term contract because they went to him and said, we're not paying you this fifth-year option. Right. He's not going to do it. Right. We're, we're, we're just going to cut you. Here's here's the or else. Here's the offer we'll make you on a contract to keep you around. Of course, they eventually cut him anyway. But this now makes it less likely that teams exercise the option, and that's good for the player. It's good for Jordan Love because even though he doesn't have – that injury protection that he would have had in the past. Cause I think in the past they pick it up, yeah, they pick it up. Right. It's injury only. We'll pick it up. We could always cut him after the right. year. That's right. It puts him in that spot where he's now in a contract year next year. He's an unrestricted free agent and the Packers will have that limited window of exclusive negotiating like the giants have with Daniel Jones. And they'll have the, the, the leverage of the franchise tag, but it's going to be a $15 million gamble. Yeah. Last year it was about 10 for the giants Right, where the salary cap is going and where this number is, it's about 15 million that the, the Packers are, are putting at risk here. If they have to go franchise tag next year with Jordan love and uh, you know, good problem to have. Yeah, I think no, that's the only good too. problem to have is no problem. Yeah. It's a, it's a good problem, but it's still a problem. It is. That's right. It's still a problem, but you know, I think it's one where if they were evaluating right now and they went, Hey, no fifth year option. And damn, he played good enough that we were going, man, we got a franchise tag you and work out a long-term deal or something like that. I think you're right. They'd still go, Hey, we'll take it from where we were at and the situation we were in with Rogers and everything there. So, you know, we'll see where they, where we go. And, you know, again, there, there's some support, support there. He does, he does look very calm on the field. I've never felt like he was flustered. We saw last year that, and then the coming together of the skills that we all thought the guy had coming out of, you know, Utah state there. You, know, you see, he's, he's a big guy, man. He's got big hands. He throws the ball easy. It spins nice. It's a pretty spiral, you know, so we'll see. And then they're a team that doesn't have to depend on him as we know. They should be able to run the ball and play a complete full ga team full game there to where they don't need him to throw it 42 times a game for 380 yards. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. But I'm hopeful for Jordan Love and the Packers in general you know, because, like you said, the NFC, the NFC North is not that deep. And I think that team is better than people are giving it credit for right now sitting here in the spring of 23. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.